government's anti-corruption agenda. Is it a myth or it's a reality? Well, the president has said his commitment to fight corruption remains high and unparalleled. His opposite um, uh, colleague, that is former President John Mahama, has said that he fought corruption better than the current president. So where does that leave you and I, the citizen? Now, the president recently met um, civil society um, members in the anti-corruption space and tried to give some perspective to his fight against corruption. In recent times, the president had been criticized about how he dispensed of the services of former, act, uh, former Auditor General Daniel Domelevu. He was also uh, criticized for not taking a strict action against the boss for the public procurement authority who was engaged in a cash uh, for sale contract deal and many others as well there's reference to even um, accusations about the ajapa deal the recent deal relating to ECA and gnpc so really is the president uh, walking the talk when it comes to anti-corruption let's hear some thoughts from him I think we're all aware of the circumstances in which the first auditor, when I say the first, the first auditor general, my time, left office and seemed to presage some disputation between him and my government, between him and myself, and somebody had to act in his place. I felt that it was important that that person should be given sufficient time to develop the confidence of the population rather than to rush to an appointment which may, which could also have given the impression that that is the reason why we acted against the first order to tell to remove him from office and plant somebody perhaps more pliant or more accessible. I believe the one who succeeded him, who came to succeed him by a natural order in, 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 in the hierarchy there, has not demonstrated sufficient quality, independence of view. For instance, he's responsible for something that is unheard of in our history, the 12 statutory reports that have to be compiled and placed before Parliament in the year of Parliament. This is the first time it has ever been done, even the most outed Auditor General before, never managed to do it. This one has done it. I think that on the basis of the work that he has done and the, and the, and the, the independence with which he has gone on his work, if today efforts are made to confirm him, which I believe should be done, that confirmation process will gather more public support than if it had been rushed immediately after the, after the unfortunate exit of the first. As I say, um, the circumstances in which the first Auditor General left, to some extent, constrained me in the manner in which I responded to his success. But yes, um, do I understand that in fact the process has begun? It has begun? Yes. What is it? Is it is recommended? And it's on, is it going to go to the, uh, the, the Council of State? Yeah. So all those, those processes are already in there. But, it, I, but to, to put it in its context, yes, I agree. And that's the president just speaking uh, this week. Our guest this morning, Dr. Yao Graham, coordinator of the Third World Network, one of the foremost pioneers in civil society in reference to extractives and the environment. Dr. Kojo Asante, uh, director of policy engagement and advocacy at CDD Ghana. Edwiji Tamaklu, NDC's legal team, and Kamal Dean Abdullah, MPP, uh, Deputy Communications Director. I'll turn first to Dr. Yao Graham. Thanks very much, Dr. Graham, for joining us. And it's not often we get to speak with you. Uh, so glad to really have you on the program. So the current Akufuado administration has uh, seen a number of issues, the most recent one being the ACA GMPC saga. We've seen the procurement issues relating to Sputnik V, where the Deputy Health Minister violated uh, procurement laws. We've had the PPA boss who has not been prosecuted for engaging in a cash for sale contract deal 
Meanwhile, we are now seeing prosecutions for Collins Dowda et al. We've seen how uh, Mr. Domlevo uh, left office and also excavators that got uh, lost under a special purpose vehicle when the Galamse fight was at its height sometime in 2020. And then there's been the thought of uh, gagging of individuals who've been critical of the government. What are your thoughts about whether the president is walking his talk? Yeah, uh, good morning, uh, Jifa and uh, the colleagues on the panel who I can't see because I'm on Zoom. And also good morning to your, to, to, to your listeners and, and viewers. Um, I think the, clearly the perception in society, and not only among uh, a few civil society organizations about whether the government is doing a good job on corruption or not, uh, has to be seen with a, a wider lens beyond what is in the Auditor General's report. Because people experience government at so many levels, at the district level, and also all the way to the national, and also in different spheres of their lives, whether it's in public procurement, how people get hired for the public service, uh, which businesses are favored, even which neighborhoods uh, get uh, allocation of money uh, from, from public uh, investment. So it, I think it's the totality of people's experiences, really, that people express a view about whether there's patronage and corruption uh, in government or not. Secondly, I think most citizens are not interested, really, in a comparative discussion of corruption. I think we'll be letting ourselves down if we think the low standards for dealing with corruption under the uh, uh, Mahama government uh, has become a, set, a kind of benchmark against which to measure the Akufuado government. I mean, egregious corruption by anybody, I think, is worthy of being criticized and being a big challenge. So on, on that basis, I mean, the public have set a standard of expectation of their leaders. And clearly, in terms of how people are expressing themselves about the corruption, the president is right when he talks about the uh, uh, about budgetary allocations and so on and so forth. But at the same time, uh, there are some signal things which point to him being rather thin-skinned, you know, and uh, reacting uh, uh, in, in ways which are a bit over the top. Take, for example, the attack on Professor Jimabu. That really was not befitting of the presidency, you know. I mean, because really, was Jima Bwedi being personal in what he expressed, you know, that basically the thing about him got personal. The, 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 the coalition, anti-corruption, corruption, corruption uh, and extractive corruption that uh, I've been involved in. I mean, somebody leaked uh, a meeting. That person has been put up to it because we're deemed to be critics of the government. And, you know, uh, a, 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 an article with the same import, same headline, was splashed across pro-government publications claiming that we were engaged in an anti-Ghana, you know, uh, exercise. Anti-Ghana, really? That a ruling government becomes the country and the rest of us who are not part of it, are not part of the country, is speaking your mind an act of treason. I mean, I think these are the bigger issues that come into view in terms of how some of these things are. And even during the year, uh, so it's not simply the president. I think we should be talking about the culture of administrations. Because, you know, in a way, when uh, people in a ruling party, particularly leading members, speak publicly and angrily about the entitlement of members of the, of the party to jobs, you know, and to contracts, to the exclusion of orders. I mean, this is a, basically a declaration of privilege, uh, not based on merit or due process, simply because people are in power. People hear these things, and there's no criticism of that position. There's no pushback. So people are entitled to feel that are well. I mean, it's a free for all, limited to those who are close to power. So I think this is a wider lens we, we need to bring. And finally, I think the, the fight against corruption also, I mean, because so many institutions and agencies 
have to be involved. We have to ask the question, you know, about, about the landscape uh, of, 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 of how the intervention of different uh, actors are, 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 are treated. Because ultimately, really, I mean, we the citizens make or make government. If those who yesterday were our peers, who we have elected into office to, to, to run the country for us, uh, and also put some in parliament to serve as an opposition, suddenly become, in a way, untouchable because of the political decision that we have taken, then we have a problem. Mm. Thanks very much, Dr. Graham. Let me come to Kamal Dean, because <coughs> ultimately um, the buck stops, stops with the president. And I was looking at some data put up by the Ghana report, and they tried to do a summation of how many times corruption has been referenced um, over the last 20 years. And it is deemed that in the last sonus, that is in terms of the state of the nation address, that's the document that was analyzed, the president said nothing about it in the last two sonus. Well, so it, it gives even a certain sense that this is something the Akufuado administration doesn't even want to talk about. They don't want to reference. I gave you some examples. I know Dr. Graham says we should look at it from the wider perspective. Absolutely. Yes, but the point is, mm -hmm. this, this administration, people had hope that they would really tackle corruption, and many are disappointed. Well, thank you very much. Um, Diva, corruption in itself is a canker we must all fight. In government, without government, or out of government, you have an obligation to fight corruption. Part of the media, whether you work with your private person, whatever, all of us owe it a duty to ensure that corruption is fought to the fullest. But sadly, if I, we narrow the fight against corruption and limit it only to people in authority. And it's a very sad situation for all of us. It will continue, and that brings to fall the polarization of our own system. So that the fact that we have limited it to only people in authority, and for that matter, politicians, then it is only politicians who speak and we think that we are all fighting against corruption. However, like Doc said, it ought to be broadened. Let us broaden the scope. Let's get all inclusive on the fight against corruption. Why do we have the Whistleblowers Act? Was it for just stating in the books purposes, that is why we enacted such laws? Why do we sit here and we have laws against corruption? Was it just for the spectacle of it? No. Now, for someone to say that I expect the authorities in place to fight corruption, the person is not wrong. Because even before we come to power, our manifestos as political parties, we indicate therein that we are going to fight corruption and we're going to do this to fight corruption. But you see, with recourse to the legal architecture of our land. Doc is here, Edigy is here, I am here, but Jifa, you are here. I wake up one morning to say I am going to make an accusation against, or I'm going to accuse Jifa of some wrongdoing, which points to corruption. And because I have come or I've had a platform to make such allegations, with that recourse to the legal architecture, which tells you how to go procedurally, Jifa must be chastised, Jifa must be vilified. Is that what the way to go? No. So, you see, when you look at the fight against corruption, like I rightly said, CSOs, whoever is involved, all of us owe it a duty to speak up. But then the point now, is, Mr. Kamal now, Dean, yeah. the point is, Mr. Mm -hmm. Kamal Dean, even in these instances where you say there must be recourse to a yeah. legal process, I mean, look at what happened under the fight against illegal mining. Mm -hmm. A special purpose vehicle was created to deal with uh, the excavators that were seized and the like. They disappeared. No but, one has been held to account for so that. So the matter is closed. Is that correct? As far as I have heard or seen, oh, I haven't seen it. You are saying that emphatically that that matter is closed. I haven't no seen. investigation is ongoing. All I know, all I is, that know is that some illegal miners caught later on. So to your knowledge, up, yes. so to your knowledge is that some were caught. But that is but, that, but that but is you one cannot example. say with all certainty that that matter is closed. Okay. You cannot say that. All right. Then the so, PPA see, boss, I'm just giving uh, these uh, examples. Go ahead, go ahead. No, it's important. Happened. It's important. Mention the, them. The PPA no, boss can I, can I correct, was... Uh, uh, 
it's not a misrepresentation. Yes. Mm-hmm. In talking about the breath, I was not talking about the fact that everybody has a duty to fight corruption. That was not the point of me. I was talking about the breadth of how government power is used across the realm of power. I, contrary to what Kamal was saying, I believe that the reason why people are focused on government because government controls our collective resources and has invested with power from the national to the local government level across sectors to manage those resources for the benefits of all of us. So I think it's important to underline that my point is that the focus on government and corruption is correct. So not to say that I'm saying that somehow all of us you know, are, are accountable because I don't manage any budget. <laughs> Doc, thanks for bringing public us to that okay. perspective because That's the fine. reality is that mm-hmm. some, these examples are given, they are not um, perceived. Yeah. It's not a case of someone sleeping and waking up and wanting to accuse another person. We are not seeing the kind of actions that give confidence that the president and his administration are walking Differ- the talk. The attorney general is prosecuting Collins Dowder. Very well. But yet, the PPA boss, Mr. J, mm-hmm. ha- is, is not uh, and, in and, the and, wings. And I've asked a simple question again. We are all aware that the PPA boss matter was referred to the special prosecutor. Is that correct? Supposed to be, have been, okay, I think it's supposed to be, in, to be on investigation as we speak right now. Then I ask you a simple question. Whether the matters you have raised have been brought to an end, close, case closed, finish. As far as I That's know, the, Mr. Charles Bissou is still going is. about his normal duties. And, and of course, that does not mean that investigation... Why? With, within, within our legal palace. Why? People commit crimes to the extent that even those days we, have, we were still that in court, you don't even have bail for better cases. Today, somebody went to Supreme Court and then made sure that a judgment was secured to say that every single crime in this country is bailable. Is that not so? So the point that VCU is working out does not mean that the matter on under investigation has been brought to an end. That's not what it means. And you see, crime is not an expiry. It's not ideal milk where you can have expiry date on it. <laughs> you know that. So the point I want to make is let us not create an impression out there that if A, B, C, D has been done because I want to just see the person put into prison without recourse to Article 19, which gives you procedure and declares each and everyone innocent until proven guilty, then let us chastise and let us go out there and then finish the people and move on. Yes, I will be happy to see pragmatic steps taken, concrete steps taken towards the fight against corruption. Because it is a bigger problem for all of us. And I'll be very happy about it. The rhetorics within that area must be avoided completely. That I agree. You get what I mean? But the point is, in that same vein, we do not sit down to say that, look, the fact that A has happened and B has happened, for that matter, holistically, let us chastise the government of Nana Adedonka Kufado, and then go sit down. Why? Yesterday, John Dramani Mahama was a president. Before him, there were other presidents. We are building a nation and coming forward. CSOs are out there, and they are talking, and it's good. Media is out there and they're supposed to be the fourth estate of the realm and of course keep us in check and it's good. Other institutions that are supposed to be built to help us get the fight of corruption put uh, on the banner is also good. Like for example, the SP. If we have gone through all this, gradually we're moving. But you see, we cannot throw our hands in despair. And then of course, out of the blue, say, because this has happened, oh, it means that we cannot fight corruption. I think that is a very I, bad I don't think it's a case of we, we cannot fight corruption. No, we the, are fighting the, it. the perception is that there is no political will in this current administration uh, to fight corruption. Let me bring uh, in Dr. There Fulvazan. will not be political will when, 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 when we sit down and say that, look, let's put in place institutions that will make corruption a high risk, if you like, adventure to all of us. Then we do that, we go to parliament, we put them together, and then we ensure that matters are referred to them and investigated. What we ought to be doing now is to push such institutions to ensure that if a matter is brought before you, expedite action on them. Okay, so I'll hold you there. Uh, Dr. Asante, I know that at the time that um, 
Mr. Domelevo was pushed out of office. You were quite vocal about that. Kamal Dean talks about having systems in place and having the organizations do what they are supposed to do. So yes, we have the office of the special prosecutor. You have the attorney general's office. You have Shraj, uh, for instance, and all of that. I mean, are we just picking at the surface or this is really just about political will? Thank you and uh, good, good morning to everybody, uh, to your viewers. Uh, first of all, let me just, just reiterate something that, uh, for me, corruption is an existential threat to our democracy, our very young democracy, to our institutions. And there's a lot of things that have happened uh, in the last couple of years that has even weakened the, uh, the structures uh, for fighting corruption. And you know, I, I sometimes, uh, uh, you know, I, well, I, I shouldn't say I struggle. I can understand where political actors come from when, when you know, uh, when you are in power, you see things differently. But if we don't tackle corruption, uh, we really risk uh, a lot of things and things that people have fought for uh, for many years to sort of restore this democracy and, and try to build institutions that would deliver on, on, on the development process, you know, for, for the welfare of many Ghanaians. So uh, it's the kind of reason why we, are, we get agitated and uh, we speak, you know, with passion about, about corruption. The, the a number of disagreements we, we I have, I, let me use, let me say I, because <laughs> I think uh, I've with the president, um, and I've had the opportunity at least twice uh, to sit across the table uh, and discuss these issues. And I think we have some fundamental disagreements about how he perceives issues of corruption. One of them, and if you read the president's defense of his commitment to uh, uh, the anti-corruption fight, it's around a couple of issues, investment, in the institutions, investigative bodies, proctorial bodies, and so on. The very same things that Kamal is sure. referring to. Um, <laughs> he's talked about how he's resourced the, he resourced the Auditor General, he resourced the, the Attorney General, uh, Shraj, and others, so, and so on. He talked about uh, savings that were made through the um, procurement, you know, some reforms around the procurement processes. He's talked about uh, the need to follow due process and so on uh, and i every time and this is this is the same defense that he has made since he made that <laughs> statement uh i think i was a ghana bar association yeah ghana bar association. after the abaj yeah. yes uh, matter, matter right and i think that no, it's not it's enough the chakra the never base it, yeah it's not enough because you see the outcomes don't match the investment. So at the minimum, if you are putting money in something or you, you're pushing resources in something and you are not seeing the, the, the outcomes, the first thing, just from a public policy perspective, is to ask yourself, ah, am I wasting my resources? Maybe it's not directed to, you know, uh, uh, to the right places. And why are we saying that? Look at the perception index over the last 10 years. We, the, the picture is one of stagnation. You maybe just make a notch up, you fall. You make a notch up, you fall. But we've not hit the uh, pass mark ever for the last 10 years. Even before that, we've not hit it as a country. So when you want to measure whether or not, just from a perception point of view, there's no, the Alpha Barometer surveys in terms of ranking of corruption. And these are ranking of perceived corruption of even the institutions that are mandated to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. So how, how are we even supposed to get there? So, and that has not changed. If you look at the Auditor General's report across, it has not changed, all right? So the outcomes don't match the investment. So at the minimum, we should ask questions. Is it that we are doing it wrong? Is it that we are not going further? If the president, if you have given people money, resources, and they are not producing the outcome, shouldn't you decide, okay, well, maybe you are not the right man for the job. Maybe we need to change something else. 
we are not getting that kind of conversation. Because if at the end of uh, Nana Kufuado's uh, government, he says, my achievement is that I resourced uh, the anti-corruption institutions, and yet every indices tells us that our corruption uh, fight is stagnated, what, what, what's the legacy? So for me, that is where I have a, trouble, uh, a problem with the president. The second is that every time we had discussions around corruption, the, the way I sit, the perception I get from, or what I perceive from hearing the president is that unless you are caught with money, stuffing money in your pocket, in, in the eyes of the president, that's not corruption. You are not corrupt. No, I, I think if you are not caught categorically where you are taken through a process, he cannot take any action without proof. Not necessarily. When I, I want to, I'm making uh, this a specific point uh, I'm making about it, that he draws a line between ethical conduct and corruption. He doesn't see certain types of behavior as corrupt behavior, right? Because for him, personal gain is important. So if you have not gotten personal gain out of a, a process, then he doesn't, you know, he doesn't see that as a... And I, for example, the, the health minister uh, debate that we have been having, for instance, right? Clear uh, uh, breaches of procurement rules. You go to the procurement uh, uh, Public Procurement Authority Act, look at the Financial Management Act, there's nobody, I mean, it's been established for, you know, whatever, all the breaches. But you can't establish a personal gain. And so the person has not, basically, it's not corrupt behavior, right? But he does it, the, the point is that we, even for causing fin uh, financial loss in this country, right? When we prosecute people for causing, a lot of the charges is really are taking decisions without board approval, you know, all of that. We removed Charlotte Osei on procurement breaches. No personal gain was established. But, and it's for a reason. Because the starting point of crop behavior is conflict of interest, nepotism, influence peddling, and then if you're able to establish something in terms of whether the person, I'm like in the ABNJ, ABN, ABN, ABNJ's case, for instance, where there's clear evidence that he has profited from, from, from his, his, his transactions. And we are yet to see you know, any action taken on that, right? Then if you don't tackle, if you don't recognize how important it is to deal with that as a signal that this kind of behavior is not allowed, then it creates more perception that Oh, oh, I mean, if, you know, if this is allowed, then if I'm at a district, uh, I'm a DCE at a district, uh, whatever, uh, uh, I can also do the same. And that is a fundamental problem I have. With, with, what, with what we are seeing With, with what we are seeing. And, 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 Doc, just and, one second. And I'll, I'll, and I'll, 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 I want to, I want to, sure. just want clarity. Doc, one second. On the ABAJ matter, yeah. has it been brought to closure? But I have a problem also with that. It hasn't because been I have a, and, and I'll no, come out. It, no. yeah, okay. come out. I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 one mm -hmm. of the one of the projects that uh, mm -hmm. uh, we support is the Corruption Watch. Yeah. Since 2017, even cases that were pending before that, the AB Crenshaw case in the Standard Authority, mm -hmm. that case was well done even before uh, the MPP came into power. Uh, from that time, Yoko has investigated that case for forever. It's still investigating. It's still investigating. <laughs> to the point that the Auditor mm -hmm. General has gone back, you know, to cite that, that, that issue, you know. And you have many cases where it never is brought to a closure. Okay. The reason why Corruption Watch was actually brought was because for, if you take, like, we never it close was, cases. It was a way to kind yes, of track and follow the cases. Because we never close cases. Mm -hmm. And this is, has been the culture. So every oh, you go, we are investigating, we are investigating. But that is part of us, that if you want to fight corruption, you have to even close. that, Absolutely. there has to be some targets. Okay. Uh, Edwidji, I'll come to you, but I just want to pick Dr. Graham's thoughts on some interesting things that um, Dr. Santi has raised. It seems our systems have suffered some weakness. 
then there seems to be this dichotomy between what is ethical conduct and what is, you know, corruption. There seems to be a lack of fairness, though, and that then also has created a certain free for all. Do you think that may be the case? I mean, the, in general, because of uh, the, the, the culture around power, you know, that when you have power, it gives you a certain freedom, you know, to, 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 to engage in acts of patronage and allocation of resources. You may not benefit directly, as, as could you explain, but you create a culture where basically you are using power you know, in ways which are inappropriate. Because this is a corruption thing. He makes an important point about it's not necessarily about personal gain. So let me take some examples about how, when it comes to, let's say, uh, uh, even decisions about where public resources will be spent. You go to certain parts of Accra, neighborhoods where some people in, in, in power live, those things, they are better roads than people in, on the next street, okay? Now, that decision may not have been taken by the beneficiaries, but it's an example. People, you find those kinds of things. When it comes to employment, certain people are favored. The due process, open access of all citizens, it is generally known that all those things have been compromised. So, uh, so I think it's, it's important. And also the ethical part of, of, it, of, of the, 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 the the symbolism, therefore, what is okay to do when in power becomes kind of institutionalized. And I think the thing about, therefore, even the decision what to bring to closure in terms of, 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 of uh, 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 prosecution and the method of also closure. Why do you ask for somebody to resign? And we say, no, no, this is not a resigning issue. All those things point to a certain perception that the threshold for accountability, and we are defining accountability in a very broad sense, mm. you know, and the standards that define accountability mm. are pretty uneven on one side and very low where it ought to apply. Yeah, and depending different, on where you are located yeah. politically. Yeah, and define. Right. You see, so, that's, that's a, yes. just just uh, two just two points. Every case that I have looked at starts with conflict of interest nepotism, influence peddling, all the, the things that you basically say are just you know, ethical behavior. From you, NCA kids, you, all of those things, right? But the thing about personal gain and within an, a, a broader accountability spectrum is that people think personal gain is only about you. You, you benefit personally. No. If you are doing it because you want to favor a third party, you're not, it's not coming to you directly. There's a gain anyway. There's a gain. Because you, you're, whatever that third party provides you, and it could be just uh, family, uh, emotional, you know, uh, satisfaction that you have helped the family. And yesterday, I was, uh, Friday, I was listening to a, a conversation, it was yesterday, right? Uh, a politician was saying, oh, one of his achievements was that he was able to ensure the recruitment of uh, some of his constituents into the army and the police and all of that. And the, the interviewer says, ah, but that's corruption. He says, oh, but that, how can that be corruption? <laughs> <laughs> Forgetting that, why, is, it, is, why is he doing that? Because he's, he's using <laughs> his influence peddling. Yeah, but he, he wants to win the next election. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't think that the benefit is coming to him. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he doesn't see any corrupt behavior around that. But he doesn't see that he being retained as an, a member of parliament it's personal to him. All right, let me bring, so, let me bring in uh, Ed Eduji. So Eduji, looks like we have major challenges on our hands with reference to that. And one would have thought that the opposition would mount the pressure the same way pressure was mounted and saw some members of the previous administration resign. Um, we've not seen that kind of thing in this current setup. Resigning? I, I, I don't yes, the <coughs> bus branding scandal, oh, Jifa yeah, Ativo uh, was forced to resign. Mm, Jifa. Uh, Charlotte Osei was eventually mm. removed. Mm -hmm. I Jifa. don't want to continue. I think, Jifa, the, <laughs> the, the well. question is always about the body language of the leader. The Akufuado presidency appears to have taken, I don't care, 
whatever you say for free. Look, this is a president in his inaugural address indicated that he's going to protect the public purse by insisting on value for money. The principal legal architecture for ensuring, you know, value for money, transparency, among other things, are the provisions of Article 1815 relative to transactions and the Public Procurement Act. What has been the conduct and posturing of this president relative to this enactment? The president got his attorney general to prosecute the NCA matter, correct? As we speak, the president is prosecuting matters on Cocoa Board, correct? Mm -hmm. Maslock, Snakes, among other things, on alleged breaches of the Public Procurement Act and causing financial loss to the state. And in some cases, mm -hmm. misappropriation. Which, now, and a lot of them all happen to be NDC appointees. No, all of them NDC appointees. Mm -hmm. In the past four years of the Akufuado presidency, a lot of procurement infractions have happened. And none of them is facing due process or going through criminal prosecution. Look, as we speak, Shratch, a body mandated under the 1992 Constitution to investigate some of this issue, had come out with a 113-page report on ABAJ. And in this report, Shraj found as a fact that ABAJ was able to keep an amount of 40 million Ghana cities in his private account without any explanation as to how he came by those funds. In fact, Shraj found as a fact that his account balance in Stanchart before he became the CEO of the Public Procurement Authority was a certain figure. The same account today has a global sum of 40 million Ghana cities in it. What has been the body language of the president? I don't care. Today, as we speak, the president, Attorney General, got some people prosecuted, and there are seven prison ten in Isawam over allegations that they breached the Public Procurement Act and causing financial loss to the state. Today, a parliamentary bipartisan committee has found as a fact that the president's minister of health had breached not only the Public Procurement Act, but the 1992 Constitution, when he had the benefit in somewhere in Bono region. He made mockery of the whole conversation. So our president speaks in one way. But his body language is facing the other side. We need to situate that conversation within the overall body language of the president. Listen, and I was listening to my, my, my learned senior here, where he makes the point that, look, the president, any time corruption conversation comes in, it's quick to say that I have resourced the agencies tasked to fight corruption, irregularities, among other things. If I, Look at the 2020 Auditor General's report, Table 1. The Auditor General had found, as a fact, that the global sum of irregularities committed as of December 2016 is about 700 million Ghana cities. Now listen, by December 2020, the amount of irregularities is now 12 billion Ghana cities. And now this president has the temerity to talk about fighting corruption. So we need to have the conviction, even in terms of value, the, the level of irregularity, having resolved this organization, is now 12 billion Ghana City from 700 million. And you say you are fighting corruption. It is either the president is unaware or the country is on autopilot. Either way. Or it is also possible that public officers are not doing their job. No, have that, you thought you see, about that? But you see, because have, ultimately look, they carry see, that responsibility. Let me let me as let me give well. you a classic example. So whether public thirty seconds then, yes, then we we'll Whether take a public break. officers are in fact doing this. Look, <laughs> when the president 
in the famous uh, Sputnik V conversation, when it came up, the president had an opportunity to say that, I, Akufuado, having gotten my attorney general to prosecute and put people in prison for breaching the Procurement Act, if there's evidence that my minister had breached the Procurement Act, what did the president do? He rather made it a laughing matter. Now, so if you have a president... You pity yourself. I don't know, but... If you have a president whose body language suggests that he's not willing... Classic example. Okay. Do, uh, uh, Dom Levo. I mean, you've given okay. my co panelist okay. some time. I was going to come back yes. to you. But look still. at Dom Levo's scenario, mm -hmm. right? He is the Auditor General. Under very bizarre circumstances, he's been made to go home because we are told he's 60 years, right? Then the president, who can ask someone to go on retirement because he's 60, has just appointed a 77 year old man as the executive director of Yoko. Oh, I, th I think he I think he's left now. No, I think the I current Mr. Dapa, he was just appointed less than a month. Okay. It was a dupo. Uh, the, okay, a dupo was was a one is different. Yeah. He yeah. just appointed Mr. Dapa, a respected lawyer, 77 years old, as the now executive director of Yoko. Where is the principle? Okay, I'll hold you there. Thank you very much. Uh, that's Eduji Tamaklu there. And we're still here with our guests, Dr. Kojo Asante, Kamal Dean Abdullah, as well as Dr. Yao Graham. We take a quick break and we'll be right back. take them quickly and then we'll speak to Dr. Yao Graham. This one from Benjamin says, fighting corruption under the Akufuado government is a partisan parochial pursuit rather than the real corruption cancer that has bedeviled our economy. Um, his fight has been uh, to act to suit his team. This president has disappointed us. This one from Abdul in Agona Nyakrum says, I don't think this current government is ready to fight this canker because everything indicates that government has already lost the fight. If government means business, then the Akufuado administration should start with the prosecution of their own appointees who themselves have engaged in corrupt practices. And a final one from Koshi. The leadership style is the most important element in fighting corruption. If subordinates can sense a radiance of abhorrence for corruption around leadership, they will be quickly whipped in line. No amount of policing can prevent corruption. The most effective antidote to corruption is a construct of a culture against it. Uh, Dr. Graham, I'll come to you and I'll take these as your final points. The Akufuado government has uh, three years left of its mandate because really the year will soon be over. Is there an opportunity to turn things around quickly? I mean, three, three years is a, it's a long time for a government to build you know, a, a, a legacy. Um, so it, it can. But the, the discussion that we are having points to both uh, limitations of his uh, construction of what amounts to uh, corruption to uh, his uh, his understanding of the processes of fighting corruption. You see, because I mean, the thing about resourcing institutions and so on. I mean, that is all very true. But from what has been said uh, by by people only on this program and elsewhere, I mean, what a leader does is is is, is important because if you take the view that these things are delegated uh, to certain institutions to do. Uh, it's bureaucratic, it's legalistic, and uh, I mean, if you take, to take an example, President Mills had a reputation as a personally clean person, and so on and so forth. I mean, contrary to what our uh, NDC friends like to say, I think that Mills was a very poor national leader. Uh, and even as he had this posture all around him, many things were going wrong, and ultimately he had to be accountable. Uh, you come back to uh, to, 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 to President Akufuado. You have a situation where, if there is a consensus 
in a ruling group about, as it were, the, 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 what the benefits and perquisites of power, whether it is to get people from your hometown taken into the military, whether it is to build the roads uh, in your, your village, you know, uh, whether it is to divert uh, business from uh, particular uh, private sector actors to businesses concerned with you. You know, there are many, many things that become a perception of what is okay to do. Uh, because there's a point made about, for example, public servants not doing their work. The morale of the public service has been broken by years of political bullying and also uh, basically victimization and illegal acts which have kept you know, people afraid to do things. I mean, I've had stories where people have tried to recruit and uh, processes are finished and they get a call from somebody higher up said, add these people you know, uh, to the list. So, so, and they are not qualified. They didn't go through the process. So all these things are tolerated uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, away from maybe the high-profile uh, procurement thing, which in a way confirm for the public that actually what we perceive in our day-to-day -day lives, where I apply for a job and I discover that actually the process closed off, even whilst I was applying, because some people came through a side door. People add all these things up and feel that regimes, I mean, the government says one thing, the president pronounced one thing, but the day-to-day -day functioning of how power is used is completely contrary. So it is what is lived and, 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 and done which would define the legacy. And as it is now, clearly, I mean, I agree with a number of things that Kujo has said because, I mean, he and others have been looking, you know, a lot more closely at, at, at the granular dimensions of the, of the corruption problem. So yes, the president has a chance to fix a legacy, but we are not talking about the president as a person. The president is the head of a collection of people in power. Is that collection of people ready suddenly to radically change course? Where uh, instead of uh, government being a business opportunity, mm. government becomes an opportunity to let the Ghanaian people feel that actually elections give us accountable government, not elections give us people who see an opportunity for themselves and their associates. That, I think, is the, is the, 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 the incline that the president you know, has to get to the top of and to be able to build a legacy. And it's, it's a very steep incline. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yao Graham. He is the coordinator for uh, third... Um, I was given an amended, let me just go to that. I was given an it's amended. Third World Network, network. Africa. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> Third World Network, Africa, yes, because I was, I didn't put the Africa the first time. But thank you very much, Dr. Yao Graham, uh, for joining us. Always a pleasure to speak to you and uh, tap into your knowledge. Much appreciated, sir. And let me come back to the studio, to uh, our guests in the studio. So I'll come back to you, um, Kamal Dean, quickly. So. Dr. Graham has pointed out what could be a, a legacy, but there's also the issue of what Edrigi raised about the procurement malfeasance that is very evident in the Auditor General's report. We need to bring this to an end some way, somehow. Yeah. Um, um, first of all, the past or immediate past Auditor General's name came up in our discussion, um, which had to you even ask the first question as to or not a question, but you mentioned how he was um, taken out of office. Dome level, I referred to here. The question I ask, and that comes to mind, is simple. We're here talking about laws and talking about how we breach laws or some have breached some laws allegedly and they are not being prosecuted. Others, you claim, same laws have actually been reneged upon but been punished in a way. Domilevo matter. If we all know clearly, you that have to speed up no, on that. I'm so speeding up. Sorry. If we all know that this was wrong, or some wrong has been commissioned by people in authority, 
which led to Dom Levo being out. What stopped us from testing the loss? What stopped us? But we are testing it in court. Uh, very good. That, you know it's at the so, court so, right now. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. So right. what stopped us? Nothing stopped us. Mm -hmm. So having been to court and then pursuing the matter, okay, it's yeah, not been to its logical conclusion. But, but we do not say, we cannot say that someone has wrongly or wrongfully taken some uh, domino out. The point is that the argument is there to make, the court is here to make a pronouncement on the matter. Let's move Okay, on. but now, why two, do you then appoint two, a 77-year-old person? So, two, as Edu had pointed out... Dr. Then, Graham made a very critical point. <laughs> he used the word perception. He says all these discussions we are having hinges on perception, which is a very strong word in the corruption palace, that we all know that, yes, when you come out to say there's some corruption out there, you perceive to say there's corruption. Okay? Then, of course, you have to prove it and back same with the evidence that it demands for measures to be taken, as it were. My good brother, Edugi says, is about leadership. And it stops with the president. But examples have they, been given. They, they, Those they, are they not perceptions, Mr. Abdullah. Oh. Those are not perception, well, I beg your pardon, sir. Corruption, discussion of corruption, trust me. Yeah, but, but I'm saying that the examples and given are not perception. They are real. They've happened. That's We've seen it. We've experienced it. <laughs> he says leadership is a problem. And that the president of the republic has not shown leadership. Maybe yesterday, John Dramani Muhammad showed leadership. Clearly. Let's focus it brings on me, the current administration. We will focus on John Dramani Mahama. No, Equally, he focus, no, we will focus on John He's not in office what? anymore. You've forgotten of... You forgot yes, Eduji. You see, I like, I like the discussion of um, Doc. When Doc says, look, nepotism is part of corruption. Mm -hmm. You may not have gained directly, but maybe a third party gained. Essentially, there was a gain. Point I want to make. The Daniel Batendam late with Daniel Batendam. May he rest in peace and the Ford gift or Ford bribe saga. You remember that? I remember you were the one interviewing him or someone else on joy. Okay? Just when you mention that a Ford has been gifted or had actually been given to the president and by someone who has actually secured a contract under the same government, the line dropped. You and I know how that The went. line dropped. You and I saw leadership, how that... Leadership. You and I leadership. saw how that ended. The NDC lost that election eventually. So the point I'm just trying to make is that these things that we talk about, they are real. Mm -hmm. They are not perce perception is where you, you think that is happening. Maybe you've not directly experienced it, but these things have, have happened. Um, um, or Dr. So Santi Amaro. So that, so that when you make a logical argument that the Auditor General's report yesterday came up with some infractions that, of course, in summation, will get some 500, 700 million Ghana cities lost to Ghana. And today, the Auditor General report comes out to say that some 13 billion is lost. Then the conclusion is that there is much more corruption now based on the work that we have done. I could ask a simple question. Could it also be that yesterday, the scrutiny and the due diligence that we needed most from the auditors of such same report Funny. was lacking? Can I also make that argument? Logically. So you see, the point is that whether it's even one city that is actually misappropriated, and not put right. Ghana stands to lose. Let's all fight it. Okay. Dr. Santi, yeah. is uh, there any hope for us? Because oh, the, the, if there is 11 billion uh, <laughs> uh, corruption, I, I beg your pardon, procurement malfeasance, I'm not exactly sure where the hope well, is. Well, for me, <laughs> we don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. And I think we're also running out of time. Yeah. You see, pe people do not count. I've been, I've been in civil society for 16 years. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't see the gradual erosion of trust in the state, trust in leadership as these things. You know, I mean, sometimes when we even do surveys and you see the levels of 88 percent, 90 percent perceiving. But, but, to, but interestingly, the Afrobarometer surveys, when it comes to the trust yeah. data, yeah. the president and the military, yeah. they are usually on top. But even that you see dips. You understand. But you see, if, if the whole, and, and Dr. Graham made that point, that people experience corruption at, at many, many different levels. Mm. The society we are fighting for, what Kamal, his, the, his uh, children, you know, these children and who want to live in that society, has to be one of merit. If it comes that you have to know somebody for you to have access to good education or to have access to uh, um, health, 
that you get there, jobs. somebody has to extort money from you, jobs. even when people you are... People join political even, parties yes, because they exactly. feel they will get jobs you know, when, there. When you get the, to the that point... Tesc, is it Tescon? They are the ones who filed the petition at the presidency because <laughs> like of lack of jobs. Yeah, like but you see... As the story I know now is that right. But that is that kind of... That kind of side. But I just wanted to make some quick points because I know you're in a... And we'll take a final point from Mr. Tamaku. Sure. So... How do we move forward? Mm -hmm. You know, the issue about ethics for me is important. Mm -hmm. And the code of conduct for public office holders, which comes to parliament and disappears, comes back. We have to, we have to, return because, <laughs> it's, <laughs> because, the, oh yeah, yeah, I, it, it has been, it has been over a decade. Every time it comes to parliament, parliament, you know, run out and then we have to start all over again. If we can codify it, it helps. So that people know that this is also against the law. And that will help. The issue around, uh, for me, the public financial management. You see, when the Auditor General's report comes, and the public financial make gives the finance minister a lot of powers. You don't hear any directives, any signals that say, we have seen this type of you know, cash irregularities, and therefore, these are the instructions going to MMDCs and MDAs and so on, that from now, this and this measures we have taken. We have written to the Minister of Finance about this matter that there is no office there that does enforcement of financial uh, uh, rules. And they need an office that purposely set up to deal with that. Because if we don't do that, it just sends bad signals around that you can get away with it. All right. And that creates a, a real problem for us. All right. Edu your final point. You see, I think that this whole thing, again, like I indicated, we need to focus on the body language again of the president. Because ultimately, the decision to fire or not to fire rests with him. The decision to prosecute or not to prosecute rests with him. Now, when you have a situation where the president deliberately weaponizes prosecution against his political opponent, then the claim that he wants to fight corruption it's not one born out of sincerity, purely for partisan political gain. Now, if you have a situation where you are currently prosecuting people for alleged breaches of the Procurement Act, and you have appointees of the president who have breached the act in the same manner and those who have done. No, 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 no. It's important it's because, because of the president, yes. because the president himself has said, he was going to protect the public purse. Now, if the narrative today looks like the purse had been taken away, the people will now know that it was just mere sloganeering, rhetoric. President Akufuado has no desire whatsoever to fight the canker of corruption. And that's just called card. All right, you, you are lucky. You have 30 <laughs> seconds. I have 30 seconds. Yes. Oh, you said that the scorecard. Yes. The, yes, you, you, you summed it up by saying that yesterday, if you did things wrong, they were voted against. Yes. Of course, so today we need to face it head on, whatever that comes. Um, I, I will remain on my position to say that, look, you cannot do anything without recourse to the law. Let's ensure that it moves on. He says, he's talking about procurement breaches and all that. I agree with him perfectly. And of course, even Ajmamini himself did not say that, look, we did not breach procurement laws. He himself admitted to So fact. why is he not being prosecuted? So, 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 so the reason doesn't matter. So the honorable, so you do the honorable thing. So the honorable thing. So you do, so you do the honorable thing. Can leave office. When Jifa the president, when Jifa Jifa backdated the bus branding contract, she eventually left office. Charlotte Osei was taken on. She is it was not are quite different. No, it's, no, it's the it's same not. breaches of the procurement. No, sir, no, I am not saying not. there's no breach of the law. There is. No, Clearly. look, an independent, that, let's know, uh, look, an independent what? constitutional body Jifa. like EC, each chairperson oh, that has you. security of ten can be removed Edu. on the sole basis of you breaches made, of the procurement you have made as a by lawyer. President Akufuado. Listen, it does not lie I in your mouth, you, in the you, face of you evidence, have made as a lawyer, to continue. Moral arguments severally it is not a question of morality. Have, okay, so, gen, so, gentlemen, of morality. so gentlemen, I'll bring that to your question. So, so when did you remove Salotto say? Thank you very much, gentlemen. And the program is the key point. And thank you very much for joining us on today's edition. My guests have been Dr. Yao Graham of the Third World Network Africa.
also Dr. Kojo Asante, a director for policy advocacy at CDD Ghana. Also, Andrew Ditamaklo, NDC legal team member, and Kamal Dean Abdullahi, NPP deputy communications director. I want to say thanks to all of you for sticking with us over the last three hours. My name is Jifa Bampo. Up next is Warm Up Plus. Have a wonderful weekend. Join us again next Saturday.